It was one hell of a night when George Robertson was born. Lightning, storms, hail. It was like the gods had second thoughts about letting him out. Who knows? Maybe they were right. Well, George Robinson never asked to be born, but the universe has a way of making up its mind with or without your permission. George Robinson's mother was in the lift, screaming. The lift was going down, and so was she. Knees collapsing under her as blood washed the floor. Her wail froze the heart of the nurse who was holding her hand and froze the mechanism of the lift as well. So George Robinson was born on the floor of a lift going down that wasn't going down anymore. In fact, it wasn't going anywhere. Much like George. He started his life trapped between floors and some would argue that it was here that he remained. When George opened his eyes for the first time, the nurse closed hers for the last. She had slipped on the blood and hit her head, fracturing her skull. He discovered that for every action, there is a reaction. He now knew a little bit about one of life's certainties, and he was only 30 seconds old. George Robertson's grandmother loved him very much, so it's fitting that she was the one to hear his first word. Who's a gorgeous little boy, she asked. What do you want to do when you grow up? Fuck, said George happily. With a twitch of her eye and a flap of her arms, George's first word opened a tiny hole in his grandmother's brain, and the blood flowed in. Soon afterwards, George learned another of life's certainties. Just because you're here today, doesn't mean you'll be back tomorrow. George and his big brother Nathaniel loved to play cowboys and Indians. One day, Nathaniel told George that when you catch an Indian chief, it's the law to lynch them. So George went to fetch the rope. He didn't give it a second thought until after he'd finished his piano practice. His mum asked him to fetch Nathaniel for dinner. Well, I don't think he's hungry, he told his mum. The doctor said Nathaniel was depressed. The verdict was suicide. It was then that George's mother ceased being his mother. She refused to talk to anyone except for her precious azaleas. His father started drinking again. There were lots of fights. At times, George wasn't even sure if they remembered he existed anymore. By the time he was 10 years old, George had discovered that people are more concerned about what they've lost than what they have. George Robinson never felt that he fit in at school. He assumed that, like Olives, he was an acquired taste. One person who didn't mind the taste of George, though, was Frank. George liked Frank, and Frank liked George. They liked each other, over and over. Sometimes when he was with Frank, they had lots of fun. So much fun that George forgot about everything else. One day, George Robinson's father came home early from the pub. He crept in on tiptoes, just to surprise George. It turned out it was he who received the biggest surprise. George's father didn't cope well with surprises. It was a soup of arms and fists, of manly man things, of grunts, bruises and the splattering of blood. George had never seen his father's eyes like this before. He felt like he was suffocating. As he turned away to take a breath, he watched his furious, cursing father slip and fall, head first through his mother's beautiful glass coffee table. It had been a wedding gift and his mother adored it, wiping it down with a soft sponge three times a day. His father, though, had never liked it. And had he survived, he surely wouldn't have been too upset to see it go. Now there were two. George's mother would wear her dressing gown all day, staring out the window for hours at nothing at all. Though for the most part, she would simply just ignore him. She stopped cooking, cleaning. The house soon just filled up with rubbish. He stopped going to school started smoking pot and collecting pornography. Finally, George arrived home one evening to find his mother gone. Her dressing gown was slung over a chair, and all the clothes and jewellery had disappeared. George waited for hours, but she didn't return. Finally, he went to bed, alone, in the house, for the first time. Under his pillow, he found a note. You're on your own, kid, it said. George stayed at home all day and all night for months, but his mother didn't return. Every time he'd feel himself becoming sad, he would just wank, take his mind off things. His hands were Frank's hands. Over the years, as the house deteriorated, the trees in the yard grew wild. 
and finally one night it all just went up in flames. A big inferno that lit up the whole street and raised the house to the ground, erasing the last traces that George had ever existed. What could become of someone like George Robertson, set up by circumstance and taught the lessons of the universe from a young yielding teacher called Certainty? Did poor George Robinson ever have a chance? Or was his future set in stone by the fallen dominoes of his past? George Robinson never thought he was cursed. In fact, he never thought much at all. Years later, at George Robinson's grave, his mother stood in cheesecloth. She looked at the inscription on her son's tombstone. It read in letters like a newspaper headline. George Robinson was. Her eyes were dry and she whispered to herself, George Robinson is. George Robinson is dead. Thank you.